Hello, my name is Lisa Steele. I'm the Artistic Director here at B-Tape, and it's with great pleasure that I will introduce you to Nikita Feldman-Kiss, who is our artist at B-Tape uh, in uh, uh, cooperation with the Images Festival. And uh, Nikita, your work, The Density of Dust, is uh, a really remarkable piece. It's a two-channel installation. And I wonder if, uh, I know that it was a commission uh, from the, the Darling Foundry in Montreal, and uh, we're going to go in and, and have a look at it in a minute, but uh, do you want to just talk a little bit about that commission? Yeah, absolutely. It was a commissioned work for the 20th anniversary of the Darling Foundry, uh, which is a historic building and art institution in Montreal. It had a previous life as a metal foundry, creating everything from elevators to weapons in the Second World War. Um, and it's in Montreal's old port. It has this his historic experience of also being um, through many different iterations and it came to be an art institution in, in the late 90s. And the piece was created with full openness uh, for the 20th anniversary exhibit. Um, we started looking at archives and different ways to be in dialogue with the space. Um, so what I came up with was a density of dust, which is this two channel video that centers around the industrial incinerator that is still housed in the middle of the gallery as well as the material residue that came from it. So, let's go in. It's quite an imposing uh, structure. It's quite large. Yes. It really occupies a lot of space and it has quite a presence. So that room is, a lot of the original material is still there. However, it does, it has been retrofitted into a gallery. Okay. Um, but this is still housed in the middle. Okay, so it's in the middle of the, uh, you know, I've been to the Darling Foundry and now I'm trying to remember, uh, it's right in the middle. Yeah, it's yeah. right in the middle, yeah. but it's recessed into a wall. So okay. it, has a, it has a presence, it's very intentionally kept. Yeah. And I did this long process of cleaning the space. There's a lot of video that didn't make it into the final work. Um, cleaning up the counters, cleaning up the windowsills, cleaning up the HVAC system, which was particularly interesting, and collecting the dust and looking at the dust as a particular type of archive and a way of being in dialogue with histories and listening to what material traces maybe have to say that we can't quite hear or don't usually consider. Well, I think it's the, um, you have a particular, the, and the text, um, you wrote the text, yes. I think, of course. And um, the text, bring, as you go through the work, uh, the text texts start to question uh, and to ask questions about, uh, about the past, about the ghosts, and about um, how sometimes the, the ghosts just need to rest. Mm -hmm. And I, I really, it's one of the things that I, I found um, very moving about the work is the idea that you that through listening you can actually um, you're in your reciprocity in some way with this with the, the space the object but also the, 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 the those things those ghosts mm -hmm. that, it, that it contains. Yeah, the, um, the text is written in five parts. It's kind of a dialogue of the material world and then the historical context that is perhaps better known. I'm really curious about what it is to allow something to rest rather than to be inquisitive, rather than to like try and pull something from it, mm -hmm. to allow the agency to have a bit of choice and silence as well can be a choice in that regard. Um, it was quite it was quite special to be in dialogue with the space in this way and to see so much that I wouldn't have expected to and that looking began to feel kind of like a generous a generous thing I was being gifted. Right. Now the um, there's a part to this which I don't think we're, it's on just yet where you uh, it's a close up. So you see where the ladder is at the deal? Yeah. It's just hidden behind the ladder, and it's a hole okay. that's at that top level there. It's probably the size of maybe like the palm of my hand. Mm -hmm. And it's quite difficult to get into it. Mm -hmm. The archival gloves don't necessarily help the process, so we're going to find two. Right. And 
and you also use a, a yeah there yeah. Yeah. and this um, I think I mentioned to you that um, I find this part um, very um, very challenging mm -hmm. because of the, the presence of the scissors which start to look surgical mm -hmm. and where this is the, taking things out of the body, mm -hmm. uh, the body of this uh, object, and um, it it feels uh, very personal and uh, very intentional mm -hmm. what you're doing as you're kind of probing in and picking things out. Mm -hmm. um, and then I know that you put things then in the bags. Yeah. And uh, it sort of, it kind of hints that there's going to be something else happening to mm -hmm. them. Um, and I, maybe we should go to the, uh, to the second part of yeah. the installation uh, at the stage and just discuss that. Mm -hmm. That, um, the, the segment with the, the forceps, yes. I found very interesting as well because truly this is, you know, it's a performance piece, but it yeah. is also, I very purposeful act of cleaning. Yes. And within their hole, those holes, there was all sorts of old industrial pieces and leftovers from the incinerator itself, but there was also a lot of garbage uh -huh. and a lot of random objects and things that had been put in to kind of keep them far from yeah. you or yeah. not use garbage. Mm -hmm. Very interesting to encounter from there. Wow. And now, how was this work made? And so this, all of the materials this is quite sample clearly, bags, yeah, yeah. A, 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 a performance, and for the camera, and the, you know, a set of different um, fixed lengths that mm -hmm. do. So that's very clear. But this isn't clear to me how mm -hmm. this was made, and I'd really like to know. Yeah, of course. All of the material um, I collected went into sample bags, and I proceeded to collect work from the river that surrounded it as well. So I went to the Saint Lawrence and I collected um, water. And I got a microscope camera adapter. And so these are all pieces and residues and different dust that I collected from the space. And the movement is created with the adding of the river water mm -hmm. and um, as well as a pipette. Okay. So there's a bit of sucking and pulling that I use that for that creates that movement within it. It's really, it's, it's very, it's very beautiful and very, um, and very mysterious, mm -hmm. and I think that you know we, you're speaking here about you know, the text speaks of, of layers, and I think it's uh, it's so clearly um, you, what you're talking about are the layers of, of experience, the layers of time mm -hmm. uh, that uh, that a, a building of this age mm -hmm. and uh, the, and purpose has, and I uh, it's I think it's so. Um, it's so, it's so powerful. I think the uh, this this movement also, which mm -hmm. we did speak about, that it, you know can help us see, get a bit motion sick from this <laughs> particular movement of the of the. And the, I guess you're just are you moving? You're moving the dials on the uh, microscope slowly, slowly. It's got quite it. um, yeah. It's quite fine. So there's a lot yeah. of. A lot of time and slowness necessary as yeah. well, and there's a lot of detail in it. And there's also no repetition ever because no. when anything shifts, everything shifts. Right. Um, and there was a little bit of arranging or layering that I was able to do on the microscope slide itself. So okay. there's a bit of a painterly action um, mm -hmm. in creating the different landscapes mm -hmm. and kind of animating them as well. It's really, um, it, it's. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the tools that you use? Because you you have the forceps to, mm -hmm. to extract stuff, and you have these various kinds of brushes mm -hmm. that you're, uh, that, again, it's so purposeful and so intentional mm -hmm. um, as if yeah, you've been collecting all of this. And this goes in the bags, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what was also very interesting was my first time working with a microscope, so there was also a lot of surprise that came to me, whereas most of this is industrial, uh -huh. and there's certain things that a light can't pass through. So oh. all of the metal yeah. comes up as just black uh -huh. Uh -huh. No light can pass through it. Same with most of the rock. Okay. So there's a different type of character in it as well. Right. And um, yeah, these are all different detailing and cleaning 
objects, very much picked for mm -hmm. aesthetic, but it, mm -hmm. it was quite difficult to find soft, small brushes without yeah. um, fully getting painting. Brushes. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they're very specific. Um, you, I wanted you to just briefly tell us, you're in residence now mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Quebec, yes. uh, in uh, the, uh, a rural area. Yeah. And um, just tell us a little bit about that because it's fascinating. It's another. Yeah. Again, it was uh, you were in residence at the at the Darling, and uh, I think in this one you were also making a work. Mm -hmm. So this was just a commission. I did not do a commission okay. with the Darling. Okay. However, the residency that I am in right now is co-sponsored by them as well as Vaste Vague, which is an artist from the center okay. in Carleton Saint Mm -hmm. and it's an old train station in Matapedia, which is right where New Brunswick and Quebec meet. It's on the Restigouche River. And I've been there all winter. It's been a very nice place to be for a winter month, months. And I'm creating um, a new piece that at the moment is audio and video, and I have hopes of it becoming an audio play mm -hmm. uh, with these telegrams that were found in the train station paddock. And so the train station was built in the late 1800s, I believe. And it was such a central place for a lot of uh, transit between the Maritimes. Mm -hmm. And all of these telegrams were just kept in the attic, not really touched. The building has been kind of out of use for some time. And so I'm going through this process of archiving and transcribing and researching what is coming from the telegrams and looking at that mode of communication as well as um, the different tendrils of time that have come out from it. Because that area specifically is a world-class salmon fishing destination okay. and has always brought in a lot of summer wealth and a lot of elite. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of very big figures, like there's telegrams from the Pulitzer family. Okay. There's lots of, um, there's a lot of power and a lot of influence when you start researching the names. Mm -hmm. So it's this process of looking at the telegram as a jumping off point for this larger narrative of cyclical history and kind of another way of collapsing time and finding the ways that um, histories continuously intersect and time just continues to layer like sediment. It's, um, you really have a way of going into a place and burrowing in, I think. So um, yes. it's been a great pleasure to have this work here and to hear and I look forward to, I will follow uh, your work from now on. Thanks for having me. Wonderful it's been to meet you. a joy to be here with me, Tape and Images. Thank you.